Hi everyone, welcome to the Ultra Leg Strength Routine. I am so happy to be here with you today to show you some of my favorite exercises. Uh, this routine is designed to be your one-stop shop for all the exercises you need to run really fast and really healthily, uh, even if you aren't working with a strength coach. So that's the first disclaimer I'm gonna have. I am not a strength coach. I'm a running coach, coach a lot of professional runners. Um, and what we've seen is that, you know, athletes need strength. As much as I just wanna give athletes miles, they need to do strength. Um, and I include myself in that group. But a lot of athletes don't have the time or the resources to see strength coaches. Do that if you can. This is developed in conjunction with strength coaches, but I am not one. <laughs> so what is this designed to do? It's really focused on the hamstrings, the glutes, and the hips to give you those power generation muscles to help them be fatigue resistant, but also more powerful. Um, and you just need a few things to get started. The first one of these fancy rubber bands that is a little thicker and a little bit more resistance. Uh, you can get these real cheap. Uh, make sure you have these, even if you're not doing the strength routine, they are magic. Number two, some sort of weight. Uh, this is a dumbbell, <laughs> clearly, uh, but you don't have to use a dumbbell. You can use something like a gallon of water or anything you have lying around. Perhaps a baby that wants to get involved as long as you're safe and you have good ball security. Finally, one of these magic devices. This is for Nordic hamstring curls. I'm gonna show you how it works a little bit later. They are so good. Um, something that I've come around to begrudgingly, but as I have, I have noticed my own athletics have taken off, um, so I suggest it too. And then back there, what you'll see, you'll see a platform, which is a little Home Depot uh, container, which is there. Uh, I don't actually do yard work uh, because I'm not very good at that stuff, so I'm trying to seem cooler than I am. That's actually my wife, Megan's. Uh, and then finally, a soft surface to lay your butt. Okay, let's get started on this. I'm gonna try to do this in as close to a single take as possible. Uh, but you know what? I'm not real good at that stuff, so we'll see. That being said, I did get a mic this year, so you know I'm really stepping up my game. First up is this band work. This is so good for hip activation and strength of all those little connector muscles that are so key in running. So what we're gonna do is 20 side to side, 20 forward and back. I'm not gonna show you all of them you're gonna interpolate them from what I do, or extrapolate perhaps is the better term there. So this is just side to side. Ideally, just go as far as you can. I'm not gonna be leaving the camera frame on these. You'll really just feel a nice little tension right here on those, and that's so good. Then forward. My form isn't particularly good because I don't wanna like run into the camera. And then backward, focus on engaging your glutes when you do this. Um, do 20 side to side, 20 forward and back. You should be doing these every single day, not just when you do the ultra leg strength routine. Okay, next up, and given that this is a magical session, uh, you know I'm gonna be including single leg step ups. I'm gonna be carrying a weight on this. You don't have to carry weight. Start unweighted because they are much more difficult than they look. You go over to the stairs, foot two stairs up, I'm gonna hold the weight here. You can carry a backpack. You don't have to have a weight. And then we do 30 to 50 up and down. I'll just do 10 with each leg or so. No bouncing. Really focus on the quad engagement. You'll start to feel the burn relatively quickly. It's actually a, a little bit disturbing uh, how quickly it happens. Then you switch legs after you do 30 to 50. I suggest 50 is what you work up to. Go over to the side. And then you go relatively rapidly through this motion. What this feels like almost exactly is what climbing feels like. And the correlation between good step-ups and good climbing is pretty direct. Try it, even if you're a skeptic, I think you'll be a believer soon enough. All right, let's get to another magic exercise. We're just stuffing in these magic exercises here. This is Bulgarian split squats. Another one of those ones that every runner should be doing, even though they're gonna make you sore. It's so odd how this works. I don't truly understand the physiology of why, but it makes you sore right here, right on the glute muscle, even though it feels more like a quad exercise when you're doing it. So one foot forward, other foot on top of the platform. And I'm so impressed that I did that on my first try on this single take. Wow, go me as I'm about to fall. Uh, I use a weight, you don't have to. You can use a kettlebell up to 50 pounds for the really strong folks out there. And just do 10 of these. You know, as you get really strong, if you're like, Using a 50 pound kettlebell and 10 is nothing. You can go up to 20 or do multiple sets, but I like to keep it simple. We're not looking to be great at strength, we're looking to be great at running, and this supports it. So that's just a few. Obviously, I would do 10 if I was using all of your time. This is the harder leg, so let's see if I can do it for the camera. I did! Wow, that's a miracle. So cool. <laughs> okay, 
then 10 of these, focus on good posture. This makes your quads so strong, but what it really helps is your glutes. As you get that glute strength, you're gonna be able to bomb descents. It is one of the cooler elements of training I've ever seen is the strength gains from those two exercises to the trails. So next up, we're gonna grab this sexy guy and we're gonna go down to the pain cave because you need to use a door for this. So I'll see you back here in a minute, but first I'm gonna see you down in the basement. So come down here to the pain cave with the get shit done poster that motivates us every single day. And what do I see? But <laughs> Megan, absolutely rocking an uphill treadmill. That's 15%. That's fast. That's how you become a world-class athlete right there. And that's where I'm going to be doing Nordics. This compelling cinematography is our door. Practically Martin Scorsese here. So how this thing works, take this side, the anchor, you put it on the other side of the door, just straight it through, and then you close the door. And what you're left with is this guy. Just make sure this is about foot length. You can adjust it as you go. You're going to see how I use it in just a second. Hey, uh, this is so awkward, but it's also so important. This exercise rocks. I pulled up my shorts so you can see my hamstrings actively engaging. Um, this thing on top of your heels, the door is going to support your weight along with this trusty device. Okay, watch my hamstrings as I do this exercise. I'm going to go forward, slightly support my weight, and come back up. You're going to see from the other angle, I support my weight a lot when I do this. Watch my hamstrings engage. We do 10 of these. Uh, hopefully I don't cramp live on video. Up and down like that. It is magic. When I first did these, I was skeptical. And you know what? It's been an absolute game changer. One more angle that makes them a little bit more easy to understand. Okay, now we're from the front and we're going to see that I've learned I have to support my weight quite a lot on these. This is where the tutorial really matters. You're locked in. You're engaging your hamstrings right at the start. Like just try to make sure that you're feeling that. And then as I go forward, you're going to see me absorb my weight. I've learned that if I don't do that, my hamstring is not going to have integrity and it can't work. So here you go. Down and then up. Oh, that was a little bit, not enough weight. I was trying to impress you all, but I'm a little tired. That's not good. So I'm going to show you how I actually do it now. Um, down and up. I'm really focusing on do, letting my hamstrings do as much work as possible. And some days you'll be able to do more than others, but please do not rip a hamstring for this exercise. It is not worth it. And we're back. We just did three magical exercises in a row. You could stop there and you'd be pretty well off, but that's not all because we have some stuff down here on the ground. This is gonna make for a compelling video, I am quite sure. Um, so this is much simpler. This is related to mobility. Don't hit your head on a stair like I just did. We're gonna start with glute bridges. You do 10 with both legs. You can see me doing it. Um, a man thrusting to the sky. Civilization has reached its apex. Um, and then single leg. Do 10 with each leg. I'm gonna switch over to the other. One thing you can do while you, while you do any of these is hold a weight and thrust it up with your hips. So hold the weight on your hips and thrust up. So you could see me doing it like this. And you just kind of center it over the weight, over your um, hip bones, and just use your arms to balance it. I personally don't use weight on these because that for me is about relaxation. When I'm on the ground getting freaky with my glutes, I don't want to be overstressed, particularly after those previous exercises. Okay, then you turn to the side like you're about to take the sweetest nap. But this isn't nap time. This is clam time. Ten or so with each leg. This is another one. Just focus on the rotation itself. Those internal rotators are magic muscles that we don't work very often. This is just working mobility through the range of motion um, and then flip it around. I'm not going to do that because then you're only looking at my butt, which is probably not the best vantage point for anyone. Okay, now we're on the final of the kind of magic exercises, which is single leg deadlifts. All right, let's be honest. All of our strength friends are out of the room right now. They've been turned off long ago, and I'm just trying to get down and dirty with you. I think single leg deadlifts, if you're not using support, are a little bit dangerous because I don't have good form. If I was working with a strength coach, I would do it perfectly. But when I'm alone, I've done this and I've pulled my hamstring and it has lasted months. So what I like athletes to do is have something that they can balance on. 
use it for balance. This is not about getting perfect balance. This is about the exercise itself. And here, what the goal is, is to lengthen the hamstring and strengthen it at the same time. So what I'm going to do is hold the weight, one leg up, one leg off the ground, and then go back. Just try to barely use this and then pull up. So what you see is that I'm stretching the hamstring slightly, but not hard. Like I'm, I'm pretty good at this. At this, this is one of those exercises I've had to do so much because hamstrings are one of my weak spots. And I'm barely using the support, but I am using it because what happens is if I don't, I've seen that sometimes I can go just a little bit too far or a little bit too uncontrolled in a way that frays my hamstring. Might not be the perfect exercise, but we have seen it correlate with athletes getting fewer hamstring cramps, getting fewer injuries from their strength work, because that is my ultimate nightmare as a running coach, is giving someone a strength exercise that results in injury. Okay, then going to flip it around. Same idea. And you see, when I'm doing this, I go down straight, and then I pull up through the glute. I'm not pulling with my hamstring. The glute itself is what's doing the work. Again, any strength coaches that got this far, I am deeply sorry. You can, you know, email your senators or whatever. Okay, and then final exercise on this entire routine is very simple. I'm actually going to keep the weight for it. Um, another one that's a little bit controversial, but it doesn't hurt, and we've seen it help some athletes. So as long as you don't have Achilles issues, we're just going to do single leg calf raises. Another one where you have support, one leg off the ground, and I like to do them relatively rapidly. So almost like a little bit of a bounce. This is optional, this exercise, but we have seen it help athletes feel like they're a little bit more secure in their lower leg strength, which helps them feel better, a little bit more mobile, a little bit more durable in running. Um, I like athletes to do about 50 of these. Um, ease into it. It's almost like jump rope without leaving the ground on just one leg. Um, that's not a magic exercise, but it is something to get these often neglected muscles. But do not do it if you have any injuries in that area. Okay, so what's the takeaway of the ultra legs? The takeaway is that you just need to be doing something. These are some things that I called magic exercises, but you know what? I'm not a magician. I'm barely even a human sometimes. Uh, what these exercises are about, are about is engaging your muscles in such a way that's going to make you stronger, faster, and more confident on the trails. So below, I'll have a list of all the exercises, links to do, um, ways that you can understand to do them, a link to an article. Um, and what my, here's what my hope is, is that once you do this sort of work, you'll be able to branch off and find out what works for you. It's a baseline that we have seen works for athletes from beginners to pros, but you're a special, perfect little athlete, and you're ready to do your own strength work that can then go on YouTube, and I'll be doing it next time. So the ultra legs is proven in the field by some of the best athletes in the world, but it is not the end-all be-all. Work with a strength coach, or even cooler, become your own strength coach, and that's when the magic really happens. Okay, I absolutely love you all. Uh, please subscribe to the Some Work All Play podcast, where Megan and I have great fun on lots of different topics. Um, you're the best. Huzzah!